I know the, the clapping is not, let me be careful about what I say about clapping. That's my favorite song. And it's the, the only one for sure I know is going to be sung at my funeral because there's no way Andrew's dying before me. And the rest, we've, the end's got a list to work from. But wait, aren't you glad the, the caliber of talent we have in our church? And not only are they beautiful singers, but they walk what they sing. And it makes all the difference when that's the case with the folks we have in our church family. Amen. And I'll say again, I'll say this, a little plug, preacher plug. We're having, Angel, I want to have communion next week. And so I tell you what, I'd be in favor of having two specials next week for, the, for communion. And that can be special again next Sunday morning for the communion. You can clap for that. It'll take the pressure off of me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so glad that uh, I felt led to be here this morning. I would have hated to have missed all that's happened already. This morning, and I know you recognized uh, Jack and Linda last week that they were here, but just a reminder that Linda goes this Tuesday to get her kidney stone hopefully dealt with. And uh, it, I know you, you also recognized that Frank was here last week, Frank Patterson, but Frank, it's good to see you as well, both of y'all, all three of you. Good to have you here this morning. Grant, the picture I just sent you, for the people on the stage up here, I'm not just texting and looking at my phone. I was back and forth with Debbie Middlebrooks about a need, and uh, she's got a grandbaby more on her heart than me back and forth with her. And uh, back and forth with Leanne. She's not going to like this picture, probably. <laughs> Either late last night or early this morning, that sums up where she is and what she's doing. And to say she's in hog heaven, well, she wouldn't like the word hog. <laughs> to say she's enjoying herself would be an understatement. And let me tell you briefly about little, little Toby before we transition uh, to, the, to the message. It's been, been wonderful to be up there with him and uh, Lauren and them. Hopefully it's going to work out for Lauren and them to come down here the end of March, 1st of April, while she's still on her maternity break uh, from the church. And so that's one reason why I just felt like we can let Leanne go up and be up here this week. And uh, I could kind of be here. So Leanne went back up yesterday, going to be up through this week. Toby's got one little problem that I hope we're hoping it's just a little problem that we want you to pray with us on. And so Lauren gave me permission to share it Wednesday night. Leanne shared with the ladies. And so I'll share briefly with you. When he was born, he's got what's called, don't Google all this because I'm telling you, you'll run down some really scary places. And I don't want you to do that because it'll lead to concerns that I, I, we're hoping I don't think are there. When he was born, he has what's called a, mal, uh, a lymphatic malformation either in his arterial system or his vascular system. The good news is that normally these things can manifest themselves with a big bulge on the head or neck area. And they can, usually when they're in that, in that area, there's so many syndromes that this can be a symptomatic issue of. He is just down here on his foot, on his leg, on his ankle, on the inside of his, of his left ankle. It's a pretty good little bulge. It's something that caught their attention. Matter of fact, we got there about an hour and a half after he was born. The nurses were still talking to Lauren and them about it when they got there, assured them the folks. So I'll make a long story short, because this is one of those things that's going to, it's going to require some attention, they went and saw a specialist. The, the Saturday night he was dismissed from the hospital, they sent him immediately up to Columbus Hospital, Children's Hospital in Columbus. Deb, I hope I'm not messing that up. Thank you. And this well-respected hospital in that part of the country, well-respected hospital in the country. And uh, so they met some specialists up there. They did some, did some initial testing, sent, sent him home. Been a, he's doing good at home. Everything's kind of normal except for this, this place on his, on his ankle foot with this little bulge. And it affects drainage into his left foot, which kind of causes some swelling there. And so here's what's going to happen this week. And here's how you can pray with it. They go back this Thursday to see surgeon specialists. And these surgeons will be the ones that kind of look at it if they feel like they need some more testing right now. They'll either put a game plan in, pl in place for treatment. It could be surgery. They'll, it, it could decide to do surgery, and they could decide to wait a little, wait a little longer until he gets a little older. Or it could be something they feel like they need to go ahead and address right now. So Josh is here taking some testing the first of this week, which is one reason why Lauren's up there. So pray for Josh as he's doing some testing in Atlanta on Tuesday and Wednesday. And if you would, just lift up little Toby this week when you're praying. And he goes back to see them Thursday, and Lauren and them are sure hoping to get some idea what the game plan is with him. But otherwise, everybody's doing great. And we're actually all doing great. Once, the, once we... Enough said, enough said, said enough. Andrew, thank you. Musicians, thank you. Sound folks, thank you. Thank you for the picture. Here's what I want to do with you this morning. 
Remember Sunday night? Those of you have come a lot on Sunday nights. Probably six years ago, maybe five years ago on Sunday night, I did a message where I had some pictures of Nelson and I kind of shared some spiritual lessons from Nelson. You remember that? Or I've kind of done a, a spiritual lesson from Nelson 2.0. So if you're visiting this morning, please don't go out here and say, that church has gone to the dogs. Because I hope, I hope what, I've, what the Lord's laid on my heart to share with you this morning as kind of an update from that. Nelson just blesses me when I'm around him. And like, I'm not the Lord. I'm not the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing of, of that walk or ability. But you know, how, isn't it neat when you're watching things happen and the Lord speaks to you as you go, y'all could be more like that. Tim, you could be more like that. Oh, that'd be a good thing to be like. And so I've got some pictures of Nelson and some four thoughts, five thoughts I brought to the pulpit with me this morning concerning Nelson. So first place I'd like for you to turn, I'm just going to let you turn in your Bibles to the book of James, chapter, cha- oh good, thank you guys. I can see the clock back there. That's what I, sometimes I can't see the clock. I like being able to see the clock. My musicians don't want me seeing the clock, but I like the clock. <laughs> okay. Being around Nelson, being around Lauren and them here, being around Lauren and Josh up there, watching his interaction with them. Those of you who have pets are going to relate to a lot of this. And the Lord has just kind of spoken to me, fresh and anew, being up there again, watching Nelson in action and all that takes place. One thing worth noting that I ought to tell you about Lauren. And Lauren. Nelson is a rescue dog that Lauren got a few years before she met Josh. And so he's just a little Yorkie poo, whatever. I, I think that's what he is anyway. All I know is that's one more high-strung dog. And, and, uh, but now he's Josh's dog. Lauren is just an appendage of Josh. <laughs> and, uh, and so he loves Lauren and Josh. And Lauren gets a lot of attention when Josh is not around. But when Josh is around, Josh is a man. When Josh is gone, everything I'm going to tell you about what I've experienced with Nelson and hopefully can make points from the Lord with are, are abundantly true, even more so than when they're both gone. First point I brought to the pulpit with me this morning is, and it comes from James chapter four, verse eight. Before I tell you the point, look at it with me. In the NIV and then the New Living Translation, just the first part of James chapter four. The Bible says in, New, in the NIV, come near to God and he will come near to you. The New Living says, Come close to God, and he will come close to you. So my first point is a simple one is, it's the importance of us staying close to God. The importance of us in a continual way drawing near to God. And the first picture I have of Nelson is one that was taken, I think when we were up there, this is Nelson, this is Lauren on the recliner. She's home from the hospital last week, and this is, this is typical. This is the recliner. If one of them's in the recliner... Nelson's in the recliner with them. If one of them's on the couch and one of them's in the recliner, as long as the one of them in the recliner is Josh, he's in the recliner. If Josh is on the couch, he's right beside beside Josh. Wherever Josh goes, wherever Lauren goes, wherever they move around that house, Nelson moves to wherever they are. The only time it's even been uniquely not the case, we got there late for the baby. We rushed up, caught a flight. We were about an hour and a half late. He's arrived. We go to the hospital. The folks that were watching Miles let us go to the hospital. We got to spend a little time with, with baby Toby and Lauren and Josh. And then we went and picked up Miles at the babysitter, which made Leanne's day because he was so excited to see Grandma. We get home, and this is the first time I've seen it. As soon as Miles comes in the house, Nelson attacks him, licking his face, licking his hands. And it so blessed me because he represents Lauren and Josh. He's what's left of them. And once he got through brutalizing poor, poor Miles, then he got right back into what I've seen all this time with him. He's going back and forth around the house. Because when they're in the house, when they sit, he sits. When, they, when they're eating, he's in the dining room. When they go to sleep, he goes to sleep in the bedroom. He wants to be wherever they are in the house. When they're here visiting with us, like last Thanksgiving, if they're at the table, he may move around our house, our main floor. Our house is not that big. He'll move around the house, but he never goes so far that he can't hear their voices. Always is the case. And the Lord's so spoken to me through little Nelson of what it would be like if all of us longed to be near him. 
Long to never be away where we couldn't hear his voice. Long to sit with him, to walk with him. As the great hymns say, one says, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to your precious bleeding side. Another hymn that's sung many times in graveside and funeral services in the garden has a line, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy, the hymn writer said, that we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. It amazes me. Being up there, being here, he'll get a little bit away from where they are for a moment. But never longer than a moment, wherever they are, Nelson wants to be with them. And my prayer for myself and for us is, Lord, help me to be like that with you all the time. Work, school, play, the car, the church, home. Long to be in your presence. Long to, be, long to want to spend some quiet time with you. Long to get along with you. Christ patterned this for us. Christ patterned this. The Son of God patterned this for us that he longed to get away from his disciples, his apostles, and just spend some time with the Father. I say to you, we're at our best when we're like that. And Nelson blesses me when I see this trait in him. The second point I brought to the pulpit with me goes like this. The importance of looking. Looking for and expecting the Lord's return. Nelson, when they leave, these two pictures, these next two pictures are Nelson. I think one's going to be at my house. Yeah, this is our house. This is our front door. When they're not at the house and he's there with me, this is Nelson. He's at the front door. He's constantly looking for them. Grant, if you don't mind, show, show the next picture. This is at their house. This is the couch in the parsonage where they live. He, he's got to play. That little cushion is gone. The cushion should be over where his feet are, but this is where he dwells. This is where he dwells when they're gone. He lays there. He may get up. This is what he just done. He may get up and do a circle or to the kitchen and back, but he comes back because it's the only window he can see out. It's right where they parked the car. It's, it's looking up the road. They're the second house on the road. The church parking lot is the first thing on the road on this side. He can see the car. When the car turns and he's convinced it's their car, life changes in the house. When he's at our house and going back and forth to our door, it's the same as when I'm with him at that house. Lauren's gone. Josh has been gone most of his time while we were up there at the hospital until Saturday night. And then Leanne would go back and forth getting them food. Or we would, we would trek back and forth with Miles. But when, most of the time I would be the one to stay there in the house with Miles where Leanne could make sure they had food and, and had things. He may move a little bit, but he's right back there looking. When they were here for Thanksgiving, just like every time they come, when they're not here, he's at the door. He may move from the door, but he only moves, he'll get on our couch, he'll get on the floor, but never where he can't see the door. He, I brought these three, three things with me that the Lord shared with me about little Nelson. Excuse me, I hadn't even shared the verses that he laid on my heart. Thanks, Thanks for being patient, Grant. 2 Timothy 4 a. what a powerful passage. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but it's for all. Listen to how Paul wrote this. It's for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. We won't be apostles. We are not apostles. But we get the same prize as the apostles when we long and love the appearance of our Lord. I jotted down these three things, A, B, and C. Nelson longs for their return. <laughs> he so loves them. He likes me okay now, but he loves them. And like your pets, I assume, they're happy when you show up. He just can't wait for them to come. He ex you know what it blesses me too? Not only does he long for it, he expects them to come. He hangs out because they always come back. Their faith, I don't, I don't know what will happen to Nelson if one of them doesn't come back. But 
spoke to me, Lord, I want, not only do I want to long for your appearing or my appearance with you, I want to live in confidence that it's true. You're coming back one day. What's going on in this world is not the way it's always going to be. And if the Lord tarries, we're going to go be with him. But, oh, aren't you glad that it's true? That what the disciples saw in Acts chapter 1, 9 through 11. What, what they saw now when they had spoken these things. While they watched, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, he went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel and also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up to the heaven? And they said, the the, the, uh, angel said, This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come again in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Nelson expects them to come back. And I want us to live in such a way that we expect the Lord to return. The third thing, he's constantly waiting for their return. It's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. Now, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Kevin, Alan, while they're gone, Nelson's working. He's busy. Back and forth. So there's two reasons why he goes to the window and looks. He's waiting and looking for them. But also, he's keeping the house safe from the UPS man (laughs) and the mailman. (laughs) I don't know how y'all do this. (laughs) I don't know how you deal with animals like this. Thank God he's in the house. Because if they show up, the alert is on. And even there... Watching that this week, it's a reminder. We ought to work till Jesus comes. We ought to serve with the urgency. We ought to have our hand to the plow as if he could come any time. But we should also plan buildings, facilities, ministries, like it may be a while, but at any moment, expecting that he could come. Oh, it's a perfect analogy of how this happens. It's a perfect analogy of what it looks like. A few years ago, I did it's either five or six funerals in a two-week period, in a 13-day period it actually was. Most of them were associated with Dignity Funeral Home between Snows and, and Make Memorial Park. And I can, I can tell you, by the end of that, by the, at the end of that 13-day period, I was funeraled out for people, hurt for people. I remember leaving the last graveside, a little weary, emotional, emotionally drained. But Revelation twenty two twenty just seared into my heart. John wrote, "He who testified to these things says, Surely I come quickly." Amen. And John recorded, "Even so, come, Lord Jesus." Like then, on occasion, I walk away from a graveside, and in my heart I say, come, Lord Jesus. Save me. Be great for our world. Death gets old. Separation gets old. I just want to remind you, he's coming. And we're at our best in the body when we're looking and expecting him to return, and at the same time staying busy, reaching out to folks, planning for the future. The third thing that Nelson has taught me, and this one came from when he was here with us, when, well, all the way back when Lauren had, had the shower, her wedding shower here at the church. Daddy was still alive and living with, it, living with us in the basement. That's the importance of holding on to what we know is true when times get tough, when we're going through a valley. And we're in a mountain, we're, in a, we're, we're not on a mountaintop, we're deep in a, in a challenging spot, holding on to what we know is true. Lauren was gone back and forth somewhere, and she was gone all day. And this is when it was just Lauren, she wasn't married to Josh yet. Man, when he was gone, Nelson got extremely anxious, extremely worried, extremely concerned. I couldn't find him, I didn't, he wasn't downstairs with dad because he never would go down there with me. If he went down there, he rushed right back up at, at this moment. I finally just thought, okay, if I let him get outside because if something happens to this dog, Lauren is going to lose a daddy. She will shoot me. I go upstairs. Lauren was thin. When she came, she'd always stay in what we call the yellow room upstairs. 
we jokingly did it because when Lauren was a little girl, we painted her room yellow. If y'all know my little girl, Lauren, she doesn't like girly stuff. So she, didn't, she never liked a yellow room. <laughs> so we, we kept it yellow when we called it a yellow room just to kind of make a big deal that, yeah, we're going to keep it yellow for a little while. Y'all going to pray for me. I, I'm not such a bad daddy. And you can see this. Show the picture if you would, Grant. This is, so this is where I found Nelson upstairs. This is the bed. This is how Lauren always leaves her bed. This is now. She's two children married. This is the bedroom, their house. So she won't, this won't bother her. I show you this. I tried to be sure there was nothing that you shouldn't see, and I'm pretty sure there's not. Just shirts and her pants and the covers. This is where Nelson is. When I was calling, he, he never budged. When I went up, he's laying on her clothes, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. When you don't know... When your confidence is shaken, when you're deep in despair maybe, I have found for me the best thing I can do is go to where I know. And what Nelson knew was these are Lauren's clothes. This is the bed she's sleeping on. And the best way to be close to her is to go to the closest thing of hers. And sometimes I say to us, church, when the valleys are really deep, when the challenges seem unusually difficult, go back to what we know is true. When God seems not to be as near as he was, or maybe we don't think God is showing up like we wish he would, the best thing we can do is hold on to what we know is true, and God's word is truth. I encourage you to read and claim the promises of God, the promises of God. He never leaves us. He never leaves us. Church, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. This is the God we serve. This is how faithful he is. Be reminded of the places and times where God made a way in your world, in your life, in the lives of your children and grandchildren, in your family. When God made a way, when there didn't appear to be a way, go back and put a stake there and say, it may seem hard now, but God, you were faithful then. I know you'll be faithful now. It's why the Lord had the children of Israel when they crossed into the promised land. He had them put those stones there, memorial stones, remember stones, because he knew in the promised land there were going to be some hard days ahead, some challenging days ahead, and it was going to benefit them to come back and see the stones and be reminded of the miracles, be reminded of the parting of the water, be reminded where God was faithful. Boy, a couple years ago in prayer meeting, we just spent some time in our prayer meeting group talking about revivals where God really met with the church or God met with us at a camp meeting where it was us or maybe sometimes the whole church. We just spent some time sharing memories and moments. When I came back to the Lord, this is what I had to do. I was gung-ho. Things were swirling at my home church. I was a little confused about all the things that were swirling. I felt God calling. I felt him sensing. I felt him speaking to me. And then there was all this stuff, and I just was too young to really put it in a box and make sense of it. And the way the Lord helped me, because I was kind of doing the youth a little bit at the church then, I had a key to get in. And Ronnie, Ronnie Griffin and... and uh, Jerry showed me how to operate the sound system enough to cut music on. And I would just take cassettes of Dallas home songs and other contemporary uh, singers at the time and hymns. And I'd go just sit in my sanctuary in the evening, Friday night, Saturday night, especially Friday and Saturday nights when I could still be tempted to go back and do some things and be with some folks that I knew it wasn't, in, it wasn't of anybody's interest for me to be a part of or go and do. And I would just sit there and remember prayers at the altar, times where God was faithful, people in that sanctuary where they sat and the things I watched them go through with confidence in God. And I want to say to you, sometimes all we know to do is go back to where we know God answered prayer. That's why I recommend your journal. And whether you keep an official journal whether you just do it loosely, man, it's worth keeping up when God answers prayer, the things you're praying about, and the things on your heart, and the things where God has come through for you, because it'll help when you're going through things that are a little bit more of a challenge and a little bit more of of a big deal. The fourth thing that I've learned from little Nelson is this. This was also back when he was here this last time, and I've seen this now two or three times, but nothing fits better than the time he was here back when Lauren had a wedding shower here at the church over in the... In the uh, 
choir room at the time. And this is when Lauren had been gone again a good while, and he just needed to, how do I describe him to you? He's just so hyper at the time. Nothing I did seemed to get him set. I'd take him for a walk, and he'd be back and forth in the house, back and forth to upstairs. And I just decided, and it, Leanne told me it really wasn't my best decision, but it ended up being a, 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 just such a sweet uh, place where the Lord spoke to my heart through it. I decided, you know what I need to do? I need to load him up in the car and bring him up to the church shower here at the church. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it went, too, on the way up. So you got to understand a few things. I've never had a dog in a car with me. Nelson's never been in a car with me. He was visibly shaking. He was a nervous wreck. He made me a nervous wreck. But I kept thinking, this is going to be worth it, Nelson. You're going to see Lauren. And my hope is this is going to help somehow. I didn't really know how. I wanted to say to him, Nelson, don't fear the journey. Don't fear the method. Strange car, strange person, strange city, strange church. But at the end of this is Lauren. And when we got there, that's when it seared on me. It didn't dawn on me. When we got there, he was euphorically happy. Leanne, not so much. (laughs) Well, you know what I learned? Through watching Nelson, it's like the Lord just spoke, not audibly, never has to me. What I promised him is true. The journey may involve weakness, some feebleness, some confusion. The journey may seem a little scary. It could be an end of life journey. Could be sudden, could be slow. Could involve some challenging transitions. The door to heaven, many, many paths to get to the door. It's like the Lord said to me, don't fear the path, church. Don't fear the path, Tim, because at the end is me. And I want to tell you, true as I've ever told you anything from this pulpit, let, took, Lauren, took, took Nelson in to see Lauren. They had a little visit. Lauren quickly got him out. I walked Nelson around the church a little bit, got him back in the car, and he laid down like a happy, happy dog. He didn't move all the way home, five and a half miles. When I got him home, I went downstairs to check on Dad because this got me thinking about Dad because this was the year Dad passed away at the end of the year. It's a challenging year. He's already in the throes of it. And I was just, in my mind, I was thinking, don't fear the journey. At the end is the Lord. Don't fear this stuff. So I immediately went downstairs to check on Dad. Nelson never likes to go downstairs because he fears you're fixing to trap him downstairs and leave him. He walked with me all the way downstairs. He walked around with me as I checked on Dad. When we got through for the first time, that's the first time he ever went downstairs with me and hung out with me. And when we got back up, it was the first time he sat down with me in the recliner and just waited till they got home. It was enough for Nelson that he saw Laura. Because he could kind of relate. Their church, they just live off the church parking lot up there. And she's always with stuff. He didn't know the other people in the room, but he knew Lauren. And I just want to say to y'all, what God promises is true. What he, what he says he will do, he will do. And he's the one that will always bring, bring comfort. And that's why the last thing I brought with me was the good. Nelson's reminded me of the good that comes from going to worship each Sunday. Because when he was there, not on a church Sunday... But in a choir room for just a few moments with the owner of his life, the person he loves, along with Josh at that time, the person he loved the most in this world, it was enough for him. And, you know, more so on Wednesdays, the weeks can get hectic and the schedule can get hectic, not only for the staff, but for you and your jobs and your schedules. And you may be like me on occasion. You're rushing around getting everything ready for whatever you got going on, and then you, you feed it in, and you make time. For me, it's my responsibility, but for you, you're making time to get here on Wednesday night. You come harried, you come tired, you come with all kind of stuff could be going on at work, family, church, the children, 
could be big or not so big. And somehow, being at church, the Lord speaks to you like he does me. And I leave so much more refreshed than when I came. And it's not that we don't meet with him and interact with him at home. But there's something about this unique thing we do across the world, and we're doing it here this morning. The body of Christ in individual vessels of clay shows up, and we corporately worship together. And somehow, through song, and through praying, and through teaching in Sunday school, and through preaching, The Lord speaks to us. We meet with him. And it makes the day better. It makes the week better. It makes life better. I'm a big believer in in interacting with the Lord daily at home. But I just want to tell you, I don't want us to ever substitute in the body of Christ the value and importance of corporately worship together on Sunday morning. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. And everything I said is worth getting involved. Man, let's draw close to God. Let's draw near to him. Let's let's hunger to be in his presence. Oh, how it would please the Lord if we longed to draw this way. If we couldn't wait to be with him in our quiet times, that we stayed in sweet communion with him, if we longed to be in his presence, oh, how it would please the Lord if we got up on Sunday morning like Andrea just described this morning. It's the first day of the week. It's the Lord's day. It's the day we corporately worship together. I want to encourage you, if you're drawn away, if you pulled away, draw close to him. Draw near to him. It's... He has chosen to work it this way. When we draw close, he draws close. When we draw near, he draws near. Imagine how it would please the Lord if we long for his return. If we lived in expectation of his return. If also we live with an urgency due to his possible return. And I want to say again. The promises of God are true. Don't fear the summons. Have full confidence that one day, let me say it this way. Man, let's live in such a way, church. Let's live in such a way, close to God, that we can have some level of confidence that one day we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That'll be worth it all, amen? I know it's kind of a, about Nelson the dog message. But I hope you sense how the Lord has spoken to me as I've watched the interaction of Nelson. I'm going to ask Ruth if she would just to come play for us. Ruth, if you would, for just a moment. And just want to open the altars this morning. Can't imagine what may be on somebody's heart this morning that they just want to bring to him. My heart would be, my heart would be that whatever anxiety, whatever stress, whatever could be pounding on our heart, whatever could be that big thing or maybe even not so big thing this morning. With God speaking to us this morning and God coming alongside you this morning and wooing you to that better place, you'd leave here. We'd leave here more committed and faithful. I know watching Nelson this week and being reminded of his faithfulness had just given me a sweet peace about little Toby that whatever's going to happen here, it's in God's hands. Really just believing it's going to be a small thing. But just believing. And I'm telling you, it's amazing. Because we know, I know, you should know. Tim Long, this isn't normal for Tim Long. Leanne's the one. Leanne's the one that's easier just to rock on through this kind of stuff. You know why this has been easy for me? Because all this time, watching little Nelson, every moment I watch him, I go, Lord, I want him to be like that. Help me to stay like that. And it's made a difference for me. And that's why I felt led to change the message. And kind of do Nelson 2.0 this Sunday morning. God's speaking to you. If you want to come talk to him this morning before we go, just you and the Lord come this morning. And let's have a closing word of prayer together.